và bây giờ thì cũng không đợi các không để các bạn đợi thêm nữa thì mình sẽ giới thiệu một vài thông tin rất là thú vị về thầy Josh thì thầy là người anh là người đến từ London và thầy đã có hơn 10 năm kinh nghiệm trong việc giảng dạy trực tiếp riêng về IELTS rồi và thầy là thầy tốt nghiệp trường King's College ở London và À, như các bạn đã thấy thì thầy khá là điển trai à, và xin mời thầy sẽ đến với buổi workshop ngày hôm nay. À, hi Church, are you ready for the workshop today? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome everybody. Yes, absolutely. I hope everybody is excited uh, for the presentation today. Uh, me, thank you very much for your wonderful introduction. So, uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, pleasure to meet you all and so wonderful to be invited. Uh, I consider it a true privilege and a pleasure uh, to be invited by IDP to speak to you all today. So thank you. And also many congratulations on your new fabulous center in District 3. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, guys, I want to encourage you all please to comment during this presentation. So thank you all very much for your lovely, kind messages. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Perfect. So first of all, ladies and gentlemen, let's have a look at the title of the presentation today. Uh, IDP instructed me to give a speech today on the topic of plans to conquer the IELTS. Okay. Now let's truly have a look at this word conquer. What does it mean to conquer something? Well, as I'm sure many of you know, it means to overcome something that is incredibly difficult in life. So I think you will all agree with me that IELTS is indeed a very difficult process. And today I want to give you an insight into how you can overcome and conquer the IELTS exam yourself. First of all, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to ask you a question. Which of the four skills, which of the four skills do you find most difficult? So I know how and what to reflect on today. So which skill do you find most difficult? Please comment below. Fantastic. So it seems to be writing. Fantastic. Yeah, overwhelmingly writing and speaking. Okay, fantastic. And a few listening in there as well. Okay, perfect. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing. So guys, today, please, I will try and give you more of an insight into how we can overcome those two skills, especially the writing and the speaking skill. I totally agree. Uh, most of my students find those the most difficult as well. So guys, thank you very much. Today, we have a very exciting schedule ahead, guys. I just want to spend a minute, please, to reflect on the contents of the presentation. First of all, everyone, we're going to study the most common mistakes when studying IELTS. Many of my students regularly make the same mistakes, and I want to try and show you how we can avoid making those and indeed to improve your ability overall. Next, we're going to talk about the importance of the academic foundation for IELTS. This is essential for success. One thing that's very important is that we try to make sure we get a strong foundation when speaking. And I'm excited today to introduce you all to the IELTS 8 plus with Charles method, which will help you all to further your progression. Ah, uh, fantastic. Thank you very much, Pam. Uh, not control the time. We will look at that as well. Very interesting. Great comment. Next, guys, we're going to reflect on the right methods to study IELTS from the very start. Many students rush straight into practicing the test from the very moment they embark on their IELTS journey. However, ladies and gentlemen, this is not the most effective way. We must try to get a strong foundation in order to be successful. Next, I want to try and teach you all some of the strategies for self-studying at home. Uh, I'm sure you have many strategies as well. But one piece of advice I will give you is that if you pick a strategy from a teacher that you truly trust or some kind of online format that you trust, it's essential that you stick with that. Please don't try to go between many different strategies and mix and match because you'll ultimately find this very confusing and difficult to follow in the long run. So try not to cram, try to effectively plan your time. Absolutely, um, thank you. Next guys, and finally, we will reflect on some test preparation. How to avoid cramming. Uh, if you're familiar with the word cramming, that means uh, being staying up until 2 a.m. the night before your IELTS exam to try and get as much information as possible uh, at the very last minute. 
In IELTS, we want to try and avoid this by making sure that all of the three steps of our progress and our preparation are prepared properly and effectively so that you guys have the best chance for guessing a fantastic score in your IELTS exam. So I hope that everybody is excited today. Um, we have some fabulous content to share with you. Now, I just want to spend a minute, uh, team, to introduce myself. So my name is Charles Price, and uh, this was the uh, only good photo I could find of myself. So forgive me for that. <laughs> um, I'm originally from London in England. Hey, um, can I ask you, has anybody here been to London out of interest? Have anyone, any of you traveled to London or to Europe in any of your time? No, not yet? Oh, fantastic. You have traveled there. Uh, T. Wing, did you like it there, T. Wing? I hope so. I hope nobody comments a negative comment about it. Yeah. Yeah, please go there. Fantastic. Guys, British people, like all Westerners, are the most welcoming people. So you would be more than welcome if you could travel there. Um, we would love to have you. Fantastic. Just, just before we go on as well, um, I am curious. Does anybody here have a preference around British or American English or indeed Australian? Uh, does anybody have a preference of which accent you prefer? So you know the most common accents that you will hear from teachers, maybe in Vietnam, we have British, American, uh, Australian as well. Yeah. So most people uh, can differentiate the difference between a, a bottle of water and a bottle of water. So we want to try and make sure that we choose the accent that you like. Yes, how fabulous. Wonderful. Please remember, though, everybody, that accents in IELTS don't matter. So you can speak with any accent. Please don't worry about that. Okay, fantastic. To tell you a little bit more about me, yeah, brilliant. It's so interesting to hear. Uh, most people, it seems like American accents, yeah. But remember, in IELTS, it doesn't matter. So for me, I have over 10 years teaching experience, and uh, I took the IELTS exam myself. Uh, many students ask me, why? Why you take the IELTS exam, Charles? You're a native speaker. But I truly wanted to understand the process of the test. And trust me, everyone, it's not easy. Even for native speakers, it's very, very difficult. Many of you may be familiar with my TikTok or have seen me around, but um, I have an IELTS centers in Ho Chi Minh City uh, named British Academy Vietnam IELTS with Charles. So I would love for you guys to, to maybe follow me on there as well. Fantastic. I originally graduated from King's College London uh, with my degree, so I feel like I'm very well qualified to, to share all of my knowledge with you today. And guys, I will be introducing the IELTS 8 plus with Charles method to help you all to be successful. So as we're speaking, um, if you have any questions or anything you would like to ask about me, please don't be shy. Um, we will have a Q&A at the end, but as we are going through, if you have any questions, please just comment them in the chat box. I'm happy to help. Perfect. So let's move on now, uh, everybody, to have a look at the question of why. Why study IELTS? Now, I want to ask you guys that question. Can you let me know in the chat now? Why do you want to study IELTS? What are your ambitions? What is the big reason you want to study? Excellent. Yes, fantastic. To have a good job for work, to challenge yourself and go abroad. Brilliant. Yes. Uh, Can Lei, which country would you like to go? Yeah, for a scholarship. These are all fantastic reasons. And that's the beauty of IELTS, everybody. IELTS, as we know, is the International English Language Testing System. And it's such a versatile exam. And the best reason for that is because it is the ultimate evaluation of a student's ability. There is no other English exam that compares in terms of finding the true ability of a student. Nothing is perfect, but IELTS is undoubtedly the most effective way. I'm just hearing about uh, Mr. Dang now, who wants to get a scholarship to study abroad. I mean, absolutely fantastic reasons. Yeah, brilliant. It opens so many doors. I love that phrase, everybody. Opens so many doors and endless possibilities. I'll just type that for you now. Opens so many doors, gives you many opportunities in your life. Fantastic. Next, and this is something I can speak for as a, 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 an owner of an English center. If I see the IELTS score, a good score on the top of somebody's CV when they're applying for jobs, I will definitely take more notice of that candidate's CV. 
The IELTS truly stands out at the top when it comes to uh, abilities and showing your scores. Fantastic. Uh, Minlay, if you have a question, uh, please just type it in the chat and I will try my best to answer. Thank you for putting your hand up. Another beautiful thing about IELTS is that it allows us to develop all four skills, speaking, listening, reading, and writing. And have many of you have told me that you tend to find writing and speaking the most difficult. And I totally agree with that. Reading and listening is something that you can do slightly more self-study at home, but writing and reading is something that requires a lot of immense time and effort in order to progress. Lastly, and do you agree or disagree with me, ladies and gentlemen? There is nothing that gives me more pleasure than to see a student who has tried their best, has taken the IELTS exam and got their dream score. Do you agree with me? Uh, when you've taken the IELTS and you manage to achieve your dream, I think there is no greater pleasure in life than seeing that student's face. So I know IELTS is a daunting and scary task. However, at the end, it can be very rewarding and fulfilling. And uh, I certainly feel this. I often get very emotional when I see my students achieve their dream score. Fantastic. So interesting to see the reasons why you all want to study. Yeah, I think study abroad is the most popular. Yeah, fantastic. Brilliant, well done. Now guys, let's start another couple of minutes just to reflect on the most common mistakes when studying IELTS, okay? Now, I'm curious, can you guys comment? What do you think are the most common mistakes? Are there any mistakes that students regularly make? Remember today, we need to spend a little bit of time to reflect on the mistakes in order to learn how to conquer them later on in the speech. So what do you think are the most common mistakes that students make when studying IELTS? Oh, brilliant, Hing. Absolutely brilliant. People try to make, well, people often make collocation mistakes when they try to force vocabulary that is a little bit unnatural. Yeah, Yui, perfect. They use two big words in the wrong context. The words don't fit what is being said. Mm, yeah. It's interesting to see people talk about formal and informal language. Yeah, <clears throat> brilliant. So for the speaking, technically, we don't need to be too formal. Yeah, um, we don't need to be too formal for speaking, although I like students to still be very respectful in the IELTS exam, in the speaking. Um, but for writing, we want to be a little bit more formal for that. Yeah, fantastic. Brilliant. So good to see all of your input. Thank you so much, everyone. Brilliant. Fantastic. So some of my students' most common mistakes, I would just like to go through with you now. The first one is that students put too much focus on practicing the exam. So many students will say, oh, next six months later, I want to take the IELTS exam, and they go straight to practicing the test. I'm sorry, everybody, this is not effective. It's so essential that we build that strong foundation before going straight to the test. And I will tell you why. Ladies and gentlemen, IELTS is a marathon, not a sprint. I love that phrase. I will type it for you now. IELTS is a marathon, not a sprint. What do I mean? Well, in order to be successful, we must put in lots and lots of effort. We must make sure that we get the strong foundation before moving straight to the test. Because if you move straight to the test and your score is not very good, you will lose your confidence. And remember, in IELTS, confidence is the key to success. <laughs> Brilliant. While I'm speaking, everybody, please uh, feel free to comment any more mistakes that students make. The next one is that when students make mistakes, they don't analyze them and learn from them. They just say, oh, don't worry, don't worry. Uh, we can forget that now. Next time I will remember. Please make sure that you analyze your mistakes to truly understand them after the test. That kind of reflection helps you to improve. The next one, so important. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the best advice. Please find a teacher or a center or some kind of online materials that you truly trust. And then when you've found them, please stick with them. 
Sometimes you can be focusing on one technique and then a, uh, you see on Facebook another technique and then another technique, another technique. Ladies and gentlemen, this is just so confusing, okay? And ultimately, when you're in the exam, under the time pressure, you may feel confused there. So try to stick to one method when learning. The next one I love. Many students, now tell me, uh, comment yes if you agree with this. Many students love to focus on the skill that they enjoy or the skill that they are the best at. Um, so for example, for me, I love listening and speaking. So I thought, oh, I don't need to focus that much on writing. I don't really enjoy it. So ultimately, this was a problem for me when it got nearer to the exam. So focus on the skill that you love most. Can you comment, uh, guys, what skill do you love most? What is your favorite of the four skills? And try not to comment none of them. Yeah, We try to, uh, to help and think of one skill that you love most. Wow, definitely. You all agree with me, guys. Yeah, speaking and listening. Fantastic. Definitely really good skills. Yes. So please make sure that you focus on the skills that you're not so good at. Yes, not the skills that you love most. Fantastic. Yeah, good. I'm so pleased that many people love speaking, guys. Yeah, I love it when people speak my language. So please feel free to, to, to comment and to continue to progress. Yeah, brilliant. Oh, guys, this is a common misconception. Oh, oh, misconception is something that many people believe. In writing, many people believe that if you write more words, you get more marks. If you write less words, you get less marks. However, this is not effective. Guys, I want you please to focus on quality, not quantity. I'll just type that for you now. Please focus on quality, not quantity, okay? Of course, you need to still write the, the, the bodies and you need the introduction, the conclusion, but please try to focus on making sure that your quality of your writing is better. And I will go through how to do that with you today. Brilliant. Well done. Yeah, fantastic. I'm really excited about this. Next, please try to focus on the logic, making sure that your answers are very logical, especially for writing, guys. Very, very important. OK, brilliant. So here we have the most common mistakes. Um, that many of my students make. And from your comments, I can see that you all agree with me. Brilliant. Uh, thank you for your love hearts, Tao. <laughs> Brilliant. Now, guys, let's reflect now on the study plan, how to conquer our IELTS in 2023. Now, guys, 2022, 2021, difficult years for all of us in many ways. But can I tell you, I have a good feeling about 2023. I truly feel like 2023 is going to be the best year for Vietnam. And I think we all have a very bright future. Do you all agree with me? Are we feeling more confident about this year? I hope so. Fantastic. Yes, I love that. Thank you, Trang. Thank you, Tao. Thank you, Hodo. Brilliant. So lovely. Oh, sorry if I pronounced some of your names slightly wrong. Um, I'm trying to learn Vietnamese, but I'm still finding Vietnamese very, very difficult. Brilliant. So let's have a look now, guys, at the study plan. First of all, we need to make sure, guys, that we conquer IELTS. So I want to introduce you now to the IELTS 8 plus with Charles method. This method has been researched by over 10 years of my putting the effort and the practice in to helping students to be successful. First of all, one of the things that's so important in IELTS is that we create that strong academic foundation, okay? This is essential for success, okay? I want you please to allocate at least 50% of your time to improving vocabulary and grammar. We're going to reflect on this now. We need to make sure that we're using good grammar structures and we feel confident using them. Moreover, that our academic vocabulary is strong as well. To do this, I want you please to try and focus on creating academic phrases, okay? So just learning pieces of vocabulary by themselves is okay, but it's much better and more effective if we can learn phrases, okay? And I want to go through that with you today, how we build that phrase bank to do it. At this stage, please don't worry about the structure of IELTS writing yet. Don't worry about how to answer it. Just please focus on memorizing nice vocabulary. And 
One way to feel motivated is to try and learn vocabulary related, related to a topic you are interested in. Try to focus on topics you are interested in. So for me, uh, I might be interested in the environment. So if I have a question about the environment, I will feel very enthusiastic about this topic. Guys, are there any topics for writing that you particularly enjoy? Uh, anything that you love? Um, for me, I love uh, economics, uh, business, technology. Fantastic. Yeah, technology. Very, very interesting as well. Food. Brilliant. Uh, many of my students now say they love the topic of sleeping. <laughs> sleeping is another topic, but uh, maybe not too much vocabulary about that one. Yeah, good. Inspiration, science, psychology. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. So find to start with when you're starting your journey. Try to learn vocabulary and phrases related to topics you are truly interested in. Yeah, brilliant. Next, I want to show you what we do next, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We need to try, please, and use a collocation dictionary in order to upgrade our vocabulary. Okay, so let's have a look, please, at an example now. Okay, so we want to learn our academic vocabulary for writing and speaking. So. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you are all familiar with the word parks. Okay, the word parks, you can see here on my screen. So many people will say, oh, Ho Chi Minh City has many nice parks. Okay, and this is okay if you just use the word parks. However, we want to try and use vocabulary and phrases together to describe the park. Yeah, so instead of just saying parks, we might say beautiful parks. Do you see? So straight away, we're going from just saying a basic word like parks to taking it to the next level by using collocation, beautiful parks. Guys, can you type in the chat now any other vocabulary we could use to describe a park? Can we think of any other synonyms for beautiful, for example? Any other synonyms for beautiful that we could use? Maybe the word stunning, for example, stunning parks. Modern parks, uh, Natale, fantastic, yeah? Scenic, such a beautiful word, everyone. The word scenic means stunning, beautiful. Yes, great. Thank you, yeah. Picturesque. Now, guys, I will ask you, please, to repeat my pronunciation here. Picturesque. I invite you to practice at home that final sound, picturesque, which means as pretty as a picture. Fantastic, yeah. Breathtaking, exquisite, such good vocabulary. Well done, everybody. Good. So do you see, don't just say the word parks. We can say beautiful parks. Or indeed, ladies and gentlemen, we can say beautifully decorated parks. Beautifully decorated parks. Please practice your pronunciation along with me now. Beautifully decorated parks. Now, I'm sure you all know the word decorated. Decorated means to talk about the decorations in the park, everything that we see around them. Yeah, fantastic. Beautifully decorated parks. Wow. Look at the progression. This is what you need to do, guys. Pick simple words, simple vocabulary, and start building your phrases and vo vocabulary and collocations. Next, we make it even better. We say well-maintained and beautifully decorated parks. Wow, beautiful. Now I'm sure we know the word well-maintained, which means that it's well looked after. Somebody takes care of the parks and beautifully decorated. I love that. So guys, while we're studying the academic foundation, we want to try and build our base of vocabulary like this, fantastic. Let's have a look at another word. Are you familiar with the word devices? Devices. Um, difficult word to pronounce, everyone. Devices. Devices. Yeah. Um, I'm sure we all know a device, um, some kind of piece of technology uh, that we use on a daily basis. So while we're looking at the word devices, we can use exactly. Thank you for your comment. Useful devices. Brilliant. Gadgets. Gadgets is a great synonym for devices. Fantastic. Yeah, really good. So device, maybe a phone or a computer or a laptop or an appliance. Brilliant. I love seeing all of your vocabulary. But guys, don't just use the word devices. We can extend it to technological devices, electronic devices. I'm, I love seeing all of this. 
state of the art gadgets. Fantastic, uh, Mr. Dunn. Good, well done. I came up with the, the phrase highly advanced technological devices. So guys, let's say, for example, you're in the writing and they ask you about technology. If you say, oh, there are many good devices, many good devices in Ho Chi Minh City that people use, it's okay. But if you say there are many highly advanced technological devices, as I'm sure many of you know, this is much more effective. So guys, please remember, please write down in your notes now, make sure that we build up a strong collocation vocabulary so that we can ultimately be more successful. Please make sure you build up a strong academic foundation. Moreover, guys, I want us now please to learn a few more phrases. One lovely phrase that we can use very effectively. Oh, actually, just before we go on, Guys, while you're building the foundation, it's important you feel confident to use these phrases and make sure that they are natural and that they work together. So I would suggest that you spend time to Google these phrases as well to make sure they are natural. Maybe discuss with your friends over a coffee morning as well. Really important. Moving on, let's spend a minute now, please, to, to try and share some of my knowledge about academic phrases and collocation that can help you. So many students will say, oh, um, learning IELTS makes me feel happy. Learning IELTS makes me feel happy. This, this is okay, but it's a little bit basic. Better to say learning IELTS gives me a strong sense of satisfaction. A strong sense of satisfaction. Guys, this vocabulary, so beautiful. This phrase, so beautiful. Guys, can you type for me, please, a sentence using the sentence or using the ending, a strong sense of satisfaction? Can you tell me something that gives you all a strong sense of satisfaction? Maybe cooking dinner or cooking a mouth-watering dinner gives me a strong sense of satisfaction. See if you can type a sentence now using this vocabulary sense of satisfaction. Oh, fantastic, Leung. Fantastic. Look at that. Getting an eight in IELTS gives me a strong sense of satisfaction. Brilliant. Uh, Lehun, have you already got your eight or you want to get an eight in the future? Brilliant. Perfect. Well, I'm sure you can do it. Please be confident. You will be great. Hin, thank you. Learning, English learning knowledge acquisition. Brilliant. Yeah, so good. Learning new skills gives me a strong sense of satisfaction. Achieving new personal victories. Good. Fantastic. Oh, I love that uh, idea about uh, the skincare routine every single night. Maybe you can give me some advice about that. Fantastic. Wow, thank you for your compliment. Listening to an enthusiastic teacher gives me a strong sense of satisfaction. Wow. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that, everybody. <clears throat> Guys, remember, don't say that something makes you happy. Say it gives you a strong sense of satisfaction. Yeah, brilliant phrase for you. Please write these down, everybody. Write them down. It's fantastic. The next one, a rich and diverse culture. We can say, oh, Ho Chi Minh City has a nice buildings or nice food. No, no, no. Ho Chi Minh City has a rich and diverse culture. Such Beautiful phrases that you can use in your speaking as well. Fantastic. Uh, Dang, in response to your question, I, I've done quite a lot of public speaking, but thank you for your compliment. Yes. Hanoi City has a rich and diverse culture. Fantastic. Oh, by the way, everyone, if I am speaking too quickly, please just let me know. Um, I'm trying to make sure that everybody can hear me nice and clearly. So if you cannot hear me, just let me know. Great. Now, I love this uh, example here, which I wanted to share with you. Uh, achieving an eight in IELTS gives me or gave me a strong sense of satisfaction. Great question um, about cuisine and food. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Technically, the word cuisine and food is the same. It's a very, very similar meaning. However, food is a little bit more informal and cuisine is a little bit more formal. Um, so, 
I would suggest that for IELTS, you can use either. I love to teach my students to use the word cuisine because I think it's just a, a beautiful word and it, it sounds much more fancy, much more beautiful than just the word food. Um, again, guys, don't just say cuisine. We say mouth-watering cuisine, mouth-watering cuisine. Uh, mouth-watering, I will type for you now, uh, is a synonym for delicious. Uh, you know when you see a chocolate cake and you say, ah, oh, beautiful chocolate cake, we use the word mouth-watering. Thank you. Great. Good question. Thank you for your questions. You know, uh, I, I firmly believe that Vietnam has the most rich and diverse culture of any country in the world. Yeah, luscious, luscious. Good. Luscious is a word. Yeah, again, it's okay. Luscious, but luscious is a little bit informal. So I would use luscious, uh, Miss Hin, with your friends more than, oh, and in the IELTS test, but maybe not in a job interview. <laughs> Good. Next, everyone, let's have a look at some more phrases here. Look at this, guys. Don't, don't say I was in a beautiful setting. No, 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 no. Say I was in a picturesque setting. So this is a beautiful sentence. Being in a picturesque setting makes individuals feel nostalgic. Guys, please learn this word, nostalgic. If you feel nostalgic, very simple. It just means you spend time to think about the past. Feeling nostalgic means that you think about the past. It can be happy or sad things. So maybe you spend time to think about your old girlfriend or your old boyfriend. Oh, I remember my old girlfriend. She was so beautiful. That's called feeling nostalgic. Yeah? Or indeed, maybe you feel nostalgic about the IELTS exam in the past. So look at this lovely phrase, guys. Being in a picturesque setting makes individuals feel nostalgic. Remember? Nostalgic, think about the past, and puts them at ease. To put somebody at ease means to make them feel comfortable, okay? Now, guys, can you try and make a sentence with any of this vocabulary? How do you feel when you're in a picturesque setting? Uh, in Hanoi, I know you have that beautiful lake uh, in the middle, I think Hun Sung Lake. How do you feel when you visit there? Or indeed, when you travel to Halong Bay, how do you feel when you go there? Do you feel nostalgic over the moon? These are really good phrases for you to use. You spend time to think about the past. Guys, I would love to encourage you, please, to make sure that you learn this phrase. Uh, feel nostalgic, picturesque setting, and puts them at ease. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> Thank you, Hing. Great idea. Well done. Thank you, everybody. Good. Uh, please take note of these guys because you will be useful for you in your exam as well. Look at this. Brilliant. We can put all of the vocab together. Having a rich and diverse culture is immensely helpful because it allows travelers to delve into the history and traditions of a new place. Now, this word here, guys, delve, difficult word. It just means to investigate. To delve means to investigate. Yeah, to investigate further. Yeah, look into. Brilliant. Well done. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. So, guys, remember, this is the academic foundation. We want to try and make sure that we build up a good academic base here. Moving on now, please, to studying reading. Okay. Now, reading, as I'm sure many of you will agree, is quite enjoyable, actually. I think reading is very uh, interesting skill. And this is something that uh, you need to try and be self-motivated to improve, okay? With in terms of reading, guys, I firmly believe that whether you get a six or a nine in reading is ultimately up to your choice. It's up to you. It comes down to how much effort you want to put in. Oh, of course. Uh, guys, if it's okay, um, one of my uh, lovely students wants me just to go back a little bit, just to have a look at this phrase again. Thank you, uh, Tan. Sorry, I went a little bit fast there. Um, just to take note of that now. Okay, good. Yeah, please feel free just to write that down. Having a rich and diverse culture is immensely helpful because it allows travelers to delve. Remember, delve, look into, discover the history and traditions of a new place. There we go. 
this would be considered a very advanced sentence, yeah, using many nice structures that you can put into your speaking as well. Brilliant. Uh, uh, Chuchan, I will ask the IDP team to let the uh, presentation be available to you uh, at the end of the speech, so don't worry about that. That's okay. I will ask uh, the team. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Okay, moving on now, please, to reading, guys. Please, can you all list down below, what problems do you have with reading? Um, I will tell you one of my observations that I make is that many students try to translate everything and write it down really quickly. Now, team, we need to try and be able to translate in our head. Okay, we need to try and be able to translate very quickly in our head. Okay, this is the skill that we need to build up. Yeah, fantastic. I'm seeing comprehension. Brilliant. Time so fast. Yes, time management. Thank you, uh, me, me, when. Time management is really important. But guys, remember, at the moment, we're just building our foundation. So at this stage, I want you, please, to find past readings that you find truly interesting. If you are interested, you will feel more motivated. So at this stage, try to look at contents that you are really interested in. We then need to explore the text deeply, especially exploring the grammar, OK? Don't worry about full IELTS reading tests yet, okay? We want to be taking our time, reading slowly, and making sure that we understand the synonyms. Remember, reading is very much a test of synonyms. Uh, I will just write that word there. Uh, synonyms, everyone, are words with the same meaning. Words with the same meaning. So many of you will know the word beautiful, okay? Can we think of any synonyms for beautiful? Stunning, picturesque. So I'll just let you type those down here. Gorgeous. Brilliant. Well done. Yeah, perfect. Okay, we will look at those a bit later. Matching information, headings, good. So reading at this stage, we want to try and understand the text truly and deeply. Find a topic that you are truly interested in, okay, and spend time to translate them in your head. We want to try and get to the stage where we're translating everything quickly and effectively in our head, okay? So this is very, very important. Brilliant. We will look at the strategies a little bit later, everybody. Please don't worry about that. Good. The strategies to make sure that we are all successful. Fantastic. Good. Perfect. Good. So, guys, please make sure that we, we focus on that when we can, okay? Brilliant. Getting a six or a nine in reading, please make sure, try to translate in your head, read slowly, and truly understand the text deeply. Um, I would suggest at this stage, Dang, that we try to translate into Vietnamese, depending on your level, but we want to be doing it in our head, not writing out every word. I need you to get into the habit of being able to do this effectively at a moment's notice in your head, okay? So we build up that strong foundation. Great. Okay. Next team, I want us please to spend a few minutes to have a look at writing, okay? Now, with writing, uh, many of you have told me already that this is your favorite skill, okay? And I would like to, you to make sure with writing that we use the shadowing technique at this stage, okay? The shadowing te technique is essential for success. And this is when we read at the same time as a native speaker. So we can use the scripts at the back of our Cambridge listening books and slow down the speed to start with. The reason we do this is so that we have the ability to increase our fluency, also to make sure that we react naturally, and also, guys, to ensure that our intonation is effective. Now, guys, intonation, please, is the rise and fall of your voice when you speak. The rise and fall of your voice when you speak, okay? This is what we call intonation, okay? And this is essential for being able to speak in a natural and effective way. Now, guys, I want to just show you a, a little bit of a funny example to show you intonation, okay? And this is just uh, this is just a funny example, okay? I don't believe this, okay? I will type it for you here. Just a funny example. You can see the phrase here. Charles, I hope you can all see it there. Charles is the best teacher in the world. Now, I don't believe this, but I just want to say this phrase in two different ways. And tell me if you can see the difference. Number one, Charles is the best teacher in the world. Number two, 
Charles is the best teacher in the world. Can you all see the difference? The first one is agreeing, okay? And the second one is disagreeing. Now in English, intonation is very, very important if you want to be successful. And a really good way to do this is to practice our fluency and our reactions by using the shadowing technique. Let's do a little bit of practice together now. Here I have a lovely phrase, and for everyone at home, I would love you please to all read along with me here. Um, let's practice a little bit of intonation. So when students first start learning, they will start by saying, for example, today I would like to present some detailed information related to how to conquer the IELTS. And you notice this is all on one level, so it doesn't come across very natural. For a native speaker, we try to use our intonation. Can you repeat with me now at home? For example, for example, today I would like to present some detailed information related to how to conquer your IELTS. Do you see? We speak in a very natural way so that the, the examiner will be impressed by your, your natural style and your reactions. Guys, with the shadowing technique, I want you please to make sure you do this. Let's do it together now. Can you all repeat at the same time as me? Please repeat at the same time as me now. One, two, three. For example, Today, I would like to present some detailed information related to how to conquer your IELTS. Do you see? I want to encourage you all guys to please try to use this technique at home, repeating at the same time as a native speaker. And one of the easiest way to use this is to use our Cambridge listening books, but slow the speed down to start with. Fantastic, really, really effective way for you to improve. Next, guys, with listening, remember, we're shadowing the listening scripts. We're doing it over and over again. Start at the speed 0.75, slowly to start with, then move to the speed of one. We can adjust on YouTube and then move to 1.15. Guys, have any of you managed to do shadowing uh, with the speed 1.15? Or what speed do you are? Ah, fantastic people are raising their hands. How wonderful. Yeah, good. Brilliant. Yeah, raise your hand if you're able to do it. What about if we're working at the speed 0.75? Yeah. That's fantastic. We all need to start somewhere. Yeah. Brilliant. We all need to start somewhere, guys. So if you need to speak a little bit slower to start with, that's no problem at all. But trust me, this is really effective. Good. Well done. Remember, team, 50% of your time in your IELTS journey should be about creating this strong academic foundation and base, especially if you want to get over seven or above. Fantastic. Brilliant. Now, guys, we are all ready now. We are feeling confident. We've got our strong academic base. Now we move on to the next step, searching and using the right method for studying IELTS. So as you can see here, guys, the IELTS 8 plus with Charles method, we next move on, please, to looking at the next step, which is when we start to incorporate some of the strategies for IELTS, you know? some of the strategies that we can use effectively in our preparation. So let's have a look, team, now, uh, the next 30%, okay, trying to build that strong strategy and technique, which will be essential for our success. Great. Remember, team, next we want to be making sure that we identify our strengths and our weaknesses and try, please, to focus on improving those weaknesses. Yeah? Very important for our success. Good. Of course, as well, we want to check carefully the criteria for the IELTS marking in each skill. Now, guys, I want to ask you, please, um, for writing, what do you find is the most difficult of the criteria? Do we all know the right criteria for writing? Can you tell me them? There are four main criteria. Could you please tell me what they are? Uh, are you all aware? So we're marked on four main things in writing. Fantastic. Of course, absolutely, we've got coherence. Brilliant. Making sure the logic of our answer is exact. Thank you, Hing. Thank you, uh, Hua. Thank you, Fung. Next, we have task achievement. 
Yeah, or we call it task response as well. Yeah, brilliant. Well done. Any other things? What about the one that all Vietnamese students love? Guys, do you agree with me? All Vietnamese students love complex grammar structures. <laughs> do you all love grammar, everybody? Raise your hand if you love grammar. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you, everybody. Really good ideas. Grammar, uh, lexical resource, grammatical range, accuracy. Yes, fantastic. How to use words exactly. Brilliant. Great. Fantastic. Excellent. So, of course, we want to be making sure the grammar structures are effective, okay, and we're using complex grammar structures. Next, we want to make sure that we focus on the structures of our writing. Yeah. Oh, guys, the structures of writing is very, very important, okay? We need to make sure we know all of the different questions, all of the different types uh, of questions. Is it argument, discussion, two-part, cause and effect, solution? We need to make sure that we know the different structures for those different essays as well. Please start to practice that now. Next, guys, remember at the start, we've got a really strong academic foundation. We've built that up with our vocabulary, our collocations in the first 50%. So we feel quite confident about our vocabulary now. And next, making sure we have logic, task response and link between ideas, guys. This is so important for success. Brilliant. So at this stage, guys, we want to start looking at some strategies about writing in order to implement these. Yeah? Guys, for task response, it's so important that you focus on the logic of your ideas. Please, please, please. I have read so many writings and the vocabulary is beautiful. The vocabulary is beautiful. The, 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 the grammar structures are fantastic, but the ideas are not logical. They don't flow naturally so please make sure that we focus on this hey guys also spend time to look at the mark scheme the different band descriptors really important okay good hey guys can i ask with speaking um i'm sure you are all familiar with the the, the marking for speaking so we've got fluency pronunciation grammar uh and vocabulary also logical thinking as well but the main ones fluency pronunciation vocabulary grammar Guys, can you all please type, which of these do you find the most difficult for speaking? I'm really interested in learning about new students. So please tell me, what do you find the most difficult? Fluence. Ah, me, brilliant. Lack of confidence, yes. Guys, can I tell you a little secret? Do you, do you all like secrets? Would you like to know a secret? Yeah. English is not like Vietnamese. Did you know there are more English speakers that are not native speakers in the world than there are native speakers? So English is not like any other language because when I lived in London, for example, London has more foreigners, more international people than British people. It's incredible. So we have, it's very multicultural. So every day, English people are used to people not speaking 100% perfectly. We're used to it every day because most of the people that speak English are not native speakers. So guys, please don't worry if you make little mistakes. We will not laugh at you. We, we, we think it's amazing that you're speaking our language. Sometimes I try and speak Vietnamese and even that is very, very difficult for me. But it's diff different because in English, not everyone is a native speaker. So guys, please feel confident. We love it when people speak our language. We love it. We love it, uh, natives. Just going back to that topic about speaking. Yeah, it seems that fluency, vocabulary is difficult. So everything, yeah, fluency, grammar as well. Now, guys, with grammar, please, please be careful with the past tense. Past tense, past tense, very, very important. Many students will be nervous, will be scared on test day. So they say, oh, last week I go to Vung Tau. No, 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 I went. Yeah. Last month I visit my mum. No, 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 I visited my mother Yeah, or my father. I traveled to Vung Tau. No, 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 I traveled, traveled. Yeah. So guys, when you're practicing your speaking, I'm just going to go over a few techniques now, okay? For you to improve them. Past tense, you can see. Asked called, danced. Guys, can you repeat after me, please? I asked my mum to study. 
I asked my mum to study. Next one. I called my dad. I called my dad. Yeah. The last one. I danced the night away. I danced the night away. Yeah. And if you like dancing, good. Brilliant. Okay. So guys, moving on now a little bit. One thing that is important when you're practicing is time management. Now, of course, this depends on the student's initial level. Okay, this is important. Um, six months to one year, if students are targeting six or 6.5, this depends on your initial level. But if you're wanting to target eight, seven or eight, you've really got to make sure you get that strong foundation. So please put in the time long term if you want to be successful. Ask yourself every day, guys, how much do you want to invest in IELTS? Can I ask you all guys, how many hours a day do you invest in studying IELTS? I'm interested. Four hours, fantastic. Yes, good. Four hours is brilliant. Two hours, fantastic. Yeah. Remember, I said before, IELTS is a marathon, not a sprint. Some of you are commenting two hours, three hours, four hours, full time. Absolutely fantastic. Okay, Natalie, don't worry. That's still good. Well done. But ask yourself, what do you want? How much do you want it? Okay, really good. I would aim guys to be studying at least one or two hours every day to be successful. Yeah. Now, with speaking, moving on guys, uh, because I'm just a little bit aware of time. I know we have a Q&A at the end, which I'm really looking forward to. With speaking, everybody, I need you all please to immerse yourself in the language. Guys, please learn this word, immerse yourself. To immerse yourself means to surround yourself. OK, you need to surround yourself and create an English environment. Please, please, please make friends with native speakers. We love it. We love Vietnamese people or indeed join a, an English club to practice. Guys, are you all familiar with the IPA? The IPA? It stands for the International Phonetic Alphabet. And these are all of the sounds in English. Please spend time to work through this, focusing especially on the more difficult sounds, yeah? What sounds do you find most difficult in English? Is it the, the TH sound? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Three, three, three. Or is it the final sound? Sometimes, sometimes. Throws, yeah? So please make sure we focus on the IPA, the pronunciation when you're speaking. Practice speaking in front of the mirror. Guys, can I ask you all a question? Every day when you look at yourself in the mirror and you do your hair, what do you say every day? Do you say, oh, I'm so beautiful, I'm so beautiful? From now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to say, thank you, thank you, three, three. <laughs> yeah, to practice those sounds over and over, sometimes. Now, when you practice, guys, please, please try to practice your advanced vocabulary. But when you do it, you must look at your mouth and record yourself. When you record yourself, you can listen back and understand your mistakes. Sometimes. Also, please practice in a sentence. Don't just practice one word. I sometimes go for dinner. Yeah, that final sound there. Make it nice and strong for IELTS success. Okay. Two or three times a day, please, everybody, at least 20 or 30 minutes. Find a topic that you are passionate about and talk about that regularly. Yeah, brilliant. Next, guys, of course, we want to be aware of using complex grammar structures. But guys, I will tell you a secret. In speaking, it's better to speak in a more simple way with no mistakes at this stage. Many students try to adv add very advanced grammar structures since they're bore in order to, as a result. Guys, what grammar structures do you use in speaking? Can you, can you let me know any grammar structures you like to use? Yeah, try to use advanced grammar structures without getting the fundamentals strong, okay? We wanna make sure that we, we get a really strong base before adding really complex grammar structures, okay? Would rather, so good. I would rather learn IELTS than, than what? <laughs> good, which, that. Oh, which is really good. We can use which will allow me or which allows me to. Fantastic, yeah? Some other suggestions uh, since 
And a really good way to use since, you say, since I am passionate about something, therefore something else, this is really good. Since I am passionate about learning English, therefore I chose to come to uh, Charles Price's IDP lecture. Yeah, really good, fantastic, great. So make sure that we use the complex grammar structures, fantastic. As mentioned before, we want to also be trying to use the shadowing technique as well. As mentioned before, shadowing at the same time as native speakers to try and improve that fluency, that, that confidence when you're speaking. Guys, I love this one. Try to speak English everywhere. I know you think I'm crazy. I know you do. But trust me, everyone, this is the best way with your friends, with your mum and dad. Even if they don't speak English, you can still try. Yeah. Help each other, support each other. Don't be shy. Enjoy the whole process. You know? Oh, one other thing, guys. You know, in part one, two, and three, uh, I will spend a few minutes now, but we have really good techniques for, for you to improve these. Um, I will try and share them with you. Uh, I did another presentation about speaking. Today is about how to conquer, but I will try and share these with you as well. Really good tips and strategies, okay? Um, let's spend a minute now, uh, to, to think about what examiners want to hear in these, these three parts, okay? So first of all, guys, let's have a look at the question, why do people have hobbies? Now, guys, if you got this question in the exam, can you type me your answer? What would you say? Why do people have hobbies for part one? For part one, why do people have hobbies? What do we think? Okay, brilliant. We will look at part two in a second, fantastic. Just type, type your answer to this while I'm going through, guys. Uh, most people on the exam will say people have hobbies because it allows them, allows, allows, allows them to relax. Yeah. Now, this is OK, guys. But the problem here is that we are just repeating the question. In part one, guys, we want to try and paraphrase. To paraphrase means to look for the synonym in the question. Now, plus, can anybody tell me a synonym for hobbies? Can anyone tell me a synonym for hobbies? You know, uh, another word for hobbies? Any idea? Perfect, my friend. Perfect, everyone. Really good. Leisure pursuit or my favorite pastime. Okay. Yes, so good. So good. So if they ask you, why do people have hobbies? And you say, people have hobbies because it allows them to relax. Nice, it's okay. But a really easy way to take your answer to the next level is to look for a synonym. The synonym, pastime. So better to say people have pastimes because it allows them to broaden their horizon and expand their knowledge. Brilliant. We've developed a little bit more detail. Yeah, we've explained and we've used the synonym, pastimes. Uh, I'm loving uh, your ideas here to let my hair down, to unwind after a long working day. Fantastic. Can uh, lay. People have pastimes because it gives people a strong sense of satisfaction. Fantastic. Look at the different techniques. Next, guys, we don't repeat the question at all. We can say having a pastime gives individuals a strong sense of personal fulfillment. Guys, please write that down. Really good phrase, everyone. Really good phrase. Please write down. A strong sense of personal fulfillment. Please repeat after me, everyone. Repeat after me. A strong sense of personal fulfillment. Beautiful, guys. Beautiful. It just means that it makes people feel good and happy. Uh, personal fulfillment means to feel happy. Yeah, brilliant. And allows them to cultivate new knowledge. Nice. Do you know the meaning of cultivate? Cultivate new knowledge. Do you know what that means? Any ideas? Yes. Perfect. Thank you, everyone. It means to gain or learn. Or even to grow. To grow. Yeah, yeah. You're thinking about farming. Uh, so this word means grow in farming as well. Uh, but it also means to, to, to learn and to, to absorb you know, while developing as human beings. So guys, top tip for part one. Remember, try to paraphrase. Please don't repeat the question, okay? Try to use our nice phrases. Focus especially on the fluency in part one. Quick questions, quick questions, yeah? The fluency, really, really important for success, okay? 
Oh, by the way, guys, as well, remember in IELTS, you can lie, okay? You don't always have to tell the truth, okay? So uh, are any of you good at lying, everybody? <laughs> okay, remember you can lie in IELTS. The examiner will not check your Facebook and check your hobbies to see if you are telling the truth, okay? <laughs> so don't worry about that. Yeah, I love that. Make up stories in part two, fantastic. Yeah, so good. So to remember, you don't always need to tell the truth. No? Fantastic. Okay, good. So guys, part, part one, we develop our answer here. Great. More than just vocabulary, guys, I want you to have a really nice and natural style when you're speaking. Confident, yeah? You know how good you are. Please remember, know how good you are. Moreover, at this stage, everyone, I want you please to try and build up your vocabulary banks, okay? This is really important to build up your vocabulary banks, okay? So let's have a look at the topic of hometown. Guys, hometown is a really common topic in IELTS. So let's say, for example, everyone, uh, they asked you to describe your hometown, okay? Many students will give a basic answer uh, like this, okay? You use nice vocabulary, a lovely city, tourist attractions, the financial capital of Vietnam. But guys, can you see, what is the problem here? What have I just taught you? What's wrong? We are just repeating. Can you see? We're just repeating the word hometown. Yeah. We're just repeating. Now, guys, before we go on, can you give me any vocabulary to describe your hometown, please? Do you have any nice vocab to talk about your hometown? Yeah, good. Everything is right on my doorstep. Fantastic vocab. Well done. I love the word tranquil. Hey, guys, the word tranquil means very peaceful and beautiful. Can I teach you a new word? The word is quaint. Uh, I will type for you now. We can say that somewhere is quaint, which means peaceful, beautiful, and historic. Maybe new word for you there, quaint, quaint. Difficult pronunciation, quaint. Uh, my bow, uh, me bow, sorry, uh, hustle and bustle. Yep, good. Hustle and bustle is good. Uh, better to say it is a city that never sleeps. A city that never sleeps. Oh, good. Uh, G, G is using the vocab from earlier, a nostalgic place. I just love to see this vocabulary, everyone. Fantastic. Well done. So here would be my uh, band, band 20 answer to share with you, okay? Now, the main thing to reflect on here is that I built up my vocabulary. I love that your vocab, densely populated, peaceful and traditional place. Fantastic. Well done. Yeah, really, really good. Now, guys, notice here that I'm not repeating the question here. So describe your hometown. I'm saying, I'm not saying my hometown is, I'm saying the place I was born is, okay? Now, some of the vocabulary I would love to highlight here, guys, is um, this vocab, thriving metropolis, okay? Please repeat, thriving metropolis, which means a busy city, yeah? So um, just to show you the difference here, guys, uh, between a more basic answer and a more advanced answer, I will make all of this vocabulary available to you at the end. One other thing, guys, in part one and IELTS, not everything has to be perfect and wonderful and beautiful. We can speak negatively as well, okay? So you can see here, needless to say, which means unfortunately, uh, it does have a high crime rate and a lack of green spaces, yeah? So we don't always have to be positive, but for me, really, Ho Chi Minh City is the best place I have ever lived in my life. So I have tried to be positive when I can. Good. Now, guys, moving on to part two. Now, do you agree with me? Part two is the most difficult part of the IELTS speaking. I think so. What part do you find most difficult? Which part do you find most difficult? Is it part two? Part two. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, I totally agree, yeah. So the examiner gives you that one minute to prepare and then you have to speak for two minutes, okay? Wow, fantastic. Now guys, remember we don't have long. Now, uh, this is not a speaking presentation today, but there's just a little bit of advice I want to give you. The first thing that we need to do is to effectively plan, okay? Now my plan in my one minute revolves around using the nice vocabulary, okay? So if we had a look at the question here, describe your favorite celebrity, I would without a doubt talk about Mr. Obama, okay? Hey guys, if you want to talk about teacher Charles, that will get you a band nine, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm just joking, good well done. So because we have the idea here, 
Mr. Obama, where he lives, okay, I'm just joking about that. Uh, where he lives, we can say the thriving metropolis, New York. Remember, thriving metropolis uh, means busy city. Then we reflect on how to organize our idea. Now, for the how they became famous, a really good structure to help you organize is to use the structure variety of something. So we can say, oh, Mr. Obama became famous or became well known for a variety of reasons. And we have three reasons here. Firstly, charismatic, which you must explain. Secondly, warm hearted, please explain. Lastly, charming. You notice everyone, I'm not saying vocabulary like nice and friendly and kind. No, no, no. We've got to try and push our vocabulary up. Firstly, charismatic. Secondly, warm hearted. Lastly, charming. But perhaps the main thing I want you to remember for part two is for the why, the final why, I want you please to tell a story. We've got to try and tell a story. Okay. Now, just to explain this, guys, um, can you see the word here, please? Uh, philanthropist. Philanthropist. Can you repeat? Philanthropist. Now, guys, a philanthropist, very simple, is somebody, do you know what it means, a philanthropist? Okay, great. If somebody is a philanthropist, it means that they give time or money to charity, okay, to charity work or volunteer, yeah? So if you say, oh, uh, Mr. Obama is special because he's a philanthropist, this is not enough. We've got to tell a story. So we might say, oh, for example, uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic, he donated millions of dollars to help uh, um, impoverished or poor children in rural Vietnam. Do you see? Or in rural America. Do you see? We've got to tell a story. Let's say we talk about uh, a romantic place or a place that you travel. Let's say the question describe uh, an interesting place in Vietnam and you talk about Halong Bay. For the why, if they say, oh, why is it interesting? People will say, oh, it's interesting because it's very beautiful. No, 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 we've got to tell a story. Maybe you could tell a romantic story. The reason why Halong Bay is special is because I traveled there with the person I love most in the world, my stunning girlfriend, yeah, or boyfriend. We shared a romantic kiss under the stars as we looked into each other's eyes and said that we are in love for the first time. It was a once in a lifetime experience. So we can tell some kind of story, yeah? Okay. Guys, if you tell a story, your intonation is always much better, much more effective. Okay, but no boyfriends. Okay, this is a problem. Make up stories if you wish. Remember, you can lie. Yeah? Perhaps you traveled to that place with your best childhood friend or something like that. Okay, we've got to try and tell a story because when we do, our intonation is always more effective. Okay, brilliant. Well done. Giving that detail. Fantastic. Okay, brilliant. I would love to send you all uh, my speaking presentation where I give more detail about this as well, okay? But I just wanna give you kind of the main ideas and, and inspire you to want to study, okay? Next guys, we move on to part three, okay? Fantastic. With part three guys, I've got a really good formula for you to follow on test day. Please write this down guys. First of all, we make sure that we answer the question, okay? We try to answer, then we explain why. When we explain why, we want to support our idea, okay? Then if we can, oh, by the way, when we explain why, we can either give one big idea or maybe two little ideas. Then we want to try and give maybe an example. Now, not always, but if we can, we can try to give an example to support our ideas, okay? And then we reflect on the alternative, some kind of other idea. Remember, in part three, we want to try and have a discussion. We want to try and have a two-sided discussion, maybe looking at the positives and the negatives, or looking at two sides of a question, okay? When we give the alternative, guys, we can either say however, or maybe in contrast, or indeed more over. Um, there's many ways for us to do this. So let me walk you through this question here, guys. If they asked you this question, who likes to travel most, old people or young people? How would you answer this? What would you say, everybody? What would you say? 
What do we think? Who thinks old people? Who thinks young people? Can you can you let me know below? Yeah, young people. Okay, good. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And then we think about why. So don't repeat young people. We say maybe youngsters, youngsters, yeah, or teenagers. Why? Why do they? Well, because they have, I'm just going to type this for you, better mental and physical health. Youngsters, because they have better mental and physical health. And Lei Hun, fantastic. Moreover, they want to explore the world. Fantastic. They want to have adventures and explore the world. Brilliant. Great. Then we might give an example. Now, your example, you can talk about yourself if you wish. So I might say, oh, for example, last year I traveled to Sapa and climbed Fancy Fan Mountain for the adventure of a lifetime. Yeah. So we give a little example to support our idea. And then we give the alternative. We then say, however, however, old people also love to travel. Why do old people like to travel? Tell me why, why, why? Uh, I think uh, Hong Li told me because they have retired. Great. Maybe old people have more time. They have more time due to the fact they have retired. Fantastic. And maybe old people have a little bit more money as well. Yeah. So we give two sides. Yes, fantastic. Very happy. Brilliant. They have more time and money due to the fact they have retired. Great. Then, guys, for most questions, you will stop then, but you can also uh, add one more sentence in the future. You might say, oh, in the future, when I am old and retired, I hope I can travel all over the world. Yeah, it's just a really effective way for you to organize your, your ideas in the part three for IELTS speaking, okay? Fantastic. I will send you all a presentation if you sign up uh, with more details about all of this stuff. Really good fun. Thank you, everyone. Okay. I love it when I see your ideas like this. So moving on, guys, let's please have a look at some of the tips now for success. What I want you to remember from today, please, everybody. So please take note with this, everyone, okay? First of all, I want to invite you all, please, to join English speaking clubs, okay? Uh, guys, are any of you a member of a speaking club at all? Like a, a coffee club or some kind of speaking activity with your friends, uh, maybe at university? Do you have that culture, joining a speaking club? Meeting with your friends, going on coffee dates. You know, it's fantastic. Yeah. Please comment yes if you have done any of these. Yeah. The reason why, guys, is because you create the English environment. This is the secret to conquering IELTS. So when you're in that exam, you feel confident, just like when you're with your friends, when you're with the examiner. Brilliant, well done. A couple of good things, guys, is that we can join listening podcasts. Hey, guys, can we help each other now? Um, what are your favorite podcasts? Do any of you like to listen to podcasts? No? Podcasts? Can you share with me? What, what are your favorite? Oh, we had TED Talks. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. BBC Learning Win. Good. These are really good. I love TED Talk. I love TED Talk. Uh, Vox as well. IELTS face off, good choice. <laughs> okay, good. Brilliant, well done. Hey guys, and I will tell you something else, another effective way, and please don't tell your parents I say this, but also finding good uh, content on TikTok. You know TikTok? Um, I would love to encourage you to, to watch really good TikToks from English teachers that have a good, clear voice in their speaking. So you can follow me if you wish. Great, effortless English. Yes, good, 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 really good, okay? I love this. Also guys, you might want to watch some entertaining and fun uh, television programs. Uh, do you all have Netflix? Try to immerse yourself in the language constantly. When you're in the shower, when you're in the bath, all the time, maybe watch or listen to podcasts, watch entertaining programs. The Ellen Show, fantastic, yeah. More of an American accent, Ellen, but she's very popular as well. Mm. Brilliant, I love that. Good ideas. Big Bang Theory, but that's very difficult to follow. Your listening skill must be very good, uh, Trungan. Must be very good. Yeah, friends. Good. Thank you. Thank you for sharing all your ideas. Next, guys, I would like to encourage all of you. It is so important right now, guys, that you get out your Cambridge uh, listening books. I'm, I'm sure you all have these books, yeah? 
just give me one second. I'll get them to show you. Uh, the Cambridge listening books are essential for success. Okay, I've got mine here with me now. Uh, guys, I want you please to focus on the script, first of all. Okay, so reading the script for section one and section four, because that's a little bit easier to read first. Okay, so first of all, we read it in three steps. Start with a slow speed, slow speed, 0.75 then move to one and then to 1.25, okay? So I want you please to be listening on the three speeds, yeah? Start slowly. Start with section one and four first, and then move to section two and three after because the multiple choice and the maps a little bit more difficult, okay guys? All right, okay? Practicing all of the time, practicing, listening all of the time, really good, okay? One thing to make you aware of everyone is that um, with reading, Vocabulary is just so important, okay? Um, as I mentioned earlier, with reading, uh, vocabulary is one of, if not the most important thing, okay? So I want you please to really focus on ensuring that you build up that vocabulary bank, especially about the topics that you love most, okay? Also making sure that you translate from English to Vietnamese, but guys, make sure you try to translate in your head, yeah? Making it really quick and effective. Please buy these books, everybody, okay? These are really important if you have them, okay? Um, practice from Cambridge 10 to 17, okay? Uh, working through as many as you can. When it comes to self-studying, guys, self-studying can be very, very effective. It absolutely can. But please try to find some kind of teacher that you trust, okay? That you really kind of believe in uh, and perhaps that you love and a teacher that's very passionate, okay? Oh, yeah, uh, remove the slide. Yeah, good, okay, sure. Um, don't worry, I will send you them at the end. Uh, sorry, uh, Hung Lee, you want me to go back here? Okay, don't worry, I will send you that at the end, no problem. Good, self-study, searching for the techniques from qualified teachers. Find a teacher that you truly love and you believe in because then they will motivate you they will inspire you. You know the word inspire? I love that word, to inspire you, to want to be the best that you can be, okay? Really good. And then you will, you will feel motivated to stick with their technique as well. Good, okay? Guys, you should know, um, this is not a reading presentation today. However, these teachers will tell you all of the different techniques. Guys, the different eight um, strategies for gap filling, summary filling, multiple choice, true, false, not given, each of these has their own technique which you need to learn, okay, in order to be effective in reading, okay? So maybe in the future, I will do a reading presentation where I will teach you them. I just love reading, okay? I want you to enjoy it, but please search for techniques to help you in the exam, okay? Really important. Guys, remember, 90% vocabulary, strategy, strategy and technique, techniques, 10%. Please, please, please spend most of your time building up that strong uh, grammar, sorry, vocabulary foundation. Really good. Great. Next for writing, please make sure that you try to buy uh, some books to help you to improve your grammar. Now, guys, are you all familiar with the, the, the grammar in use books? Do you all know these? These are really good. So you can work from the basic to the advanced level, okay? But please make sure that you get a strong basic level of grammar before making things really complicated in the end, okay? So try to get that strong base for grammar. Focusing especially on your academic phrases and collocations. Guys, please write this down, write this down. A really good piece of advice. Try to find and analyze and learn academic phrases and collocations from the sample essays of IELTS examiners, okay? Do some research, find examiners online that you particularly love and admire. This is what I do. This is what I spend all of my time doing, okay? Trying to make sure that I build up that kind of, that strong foundation for students. So when they look at my writing, they can see like a, you know, a good level writing and they can highlight and understand the phrases and collocations from that, okay? It's all there for you. So you will feel confident when putting them into your, your answers. Um, guys, just on a slight side note, I've got a really good question from uh, Tutram. Thank you very much, uh, Tutram, uh, about your idioms. Are idioms useful or important in speaking? Um, yes, but not if they make you sound unnatural. 
So uh, in speaking, sometimes students will say, oh, and when it's raining, it pours, it rains cats and dogs, I feel over the moon, I feel under the weather, you know? Um, and if you say like that, it's not very natural, okay? So maybe one or two is okay in the speaking test, but please don't try to force them because native speakers don't use um, idioms that much, okay? In, in natural speech, okay? So one or two is okay, but try not to force them if they're unnatural, yeah, good. Guys, please, just to go back to writing. Uh, okay, uh, don't worry, I will send a presentation later. Good. Guys, just going forward a little bit, please, everyone, um, because I, I'm, I, I'm looking at the time. I'm really enjoying this, guys. Sorry, I get very excited uh, teaching and sharing my knowledge with you. Um, having a look now. So remember, learn, find essays that you love online, please, and then try to study those as much as you can, okay? Remember, guys, when you're doing self-study with IELTS essays, please make sure that you focus on practicing, yeah? Practicing, uh, making sure. Now we're getting ready for test preparation. Remember the IELTS with Charles method. Now we need to make sure that we focus on task achievement, okay? So remember the different questions, please, in writing. To what extent do you disagree, or, uh, sorry, agree or disagree, discussion, one side, two side, etc. You must make sure, guys, that you answer the right essay with the right self-study structure. So please find a good teacher that will teach you the different structures for each type of answer. This is essential for success, okay? I promise you, please spend time to do this, okay? Really important. Each type of essay in, in writing has its own different structure. Oh, I love IELTS, don't you? <laughs> good, good. Essential as well, remembering the importance of logical thinking in writing, making sure that your ideas flow, supported in a nice and natural way. And guys, when you read the sample essays of, of, of examiners and not, not even just examiners, maybe just really good teachers that love writing in Vietnam. There are so many wonderful teachers. Um, have a look at their writing and you can, you can analyze them as well. Okay, fantastic. Really, really good. I hope you're feeling more confident, guys. Please let me know if you're feeling a little bit more confident, okay? We've built up the strong foundation. We've analyzed, we've learned our phrases, yeah? Really, really good, okay? Guys, to motivate you, I would like to please set you all a challenge, okay? I want to set you all a challenge, please. From now, from this day, the 18th of December, one week before Christmas, I would like you please to all set the challenge of trying to remember at least five or six phrases used in writing every day. Then I want you please to try and put these phrases into complex sentences, okay? And maybe find a teacher or, or, or a friend to work together to help you correct, okay? That is challenge number one. I really want you to do that, okay? Example, that vocab from earlier. Can you remember everyone? Prosperous nations, prosperous nations, lead glamorous lifestyles, convey stern messages. This is the kind of phrases that we want to learn. And then you can put them into complex sentences. Really important for your success. Yeah? Uh, guys, can I just invite you now? Can you put one of these, uh, one of these lovely phrases into a, into a sentence for me? Prosperous nations. Prosperous nations have a better economic and financial situation, maybe. Prosperous nations have many happy inhabitants. Yeah. Many celebrities in Vietnam lead glamorous lifestyles, which allows them to convey stern messages. The word stern here, guys, means strong, strong, strong messages. Stern, strong messages, wow. Okay, so remember, try to remember five or six phrases used in writing, okay, and then please make sure that you put these vocabulary into complex sentences, yeah. Uh, do try, don't worry, I will ask the, the host, Miss Me, to explain that to you uh, in a minute, no problem, but I'm really happy that you want to see again. Thank you, everyone. Good. Oh, guys, in the, in the writing test, remember, on test day, you will be nervous. You will be scared, okay? You will be scared. Even I was scared, okay, on the, on, the, on the writing test, okay? But it is essential that you please do a plan, okay? Guys, we all know a plan, okay? Please, 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 for writing, make sure you do a plan in the exam. 
If you don't, it will be very, very difficult for you to keep that logic in the ideas. Remember, logic, task response is so, so, so important. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Please, please, guys, make sure that you learn these phrases, write them down from today. I want you all to learn something from today. Okay. Really, really important. Guys, in the test, remember, please write down. To give you a plan, in the writing test, remember the test is one hour in total. I would suggest that you spend 18 minutes for task one. And guys, please do not spend any longer. Do not spend longer than that, because remember, task two is two thirds of the overall marks, okay? So 18 minutes for task one, please be disciplined. Then spend around 42 minutes for task two. But of those 42 minutes, please, please, please spend six minutes to prepare an outline, okay? And then 33 minutes to, to write. And then the final three minutes for checking, okay? Guys, can I be honest with you? Uh, can you tell me the truth? Do you all plan your writing? Do you all plan your writing in the exam? Is this something you like to do as well? Yes, fantastic. So important, Piran, yeah essential for success even for me you know, even now when i do writing i always like to plan brilliant next guys just reflecting for a few minutes please um on kind of the end of the thing uh it is also essential that you search for qualified and trusted teachers with a clear curriculum that are passionate guys there are so many teachers in vietnam please try to find a teacher you love and truly is passionate about their subject and has the expertise the skills do they have not only the IELTS score, but also the passion to share their knowledge? Are they dedicated and do they follow up with their students every day? This is really, really important, guys. Uh, a good teacher should have good relationships with their students so that they can give constructive feedback. So for me, uh, I am in uh, Ho Chi Minh City, but I teach online and offline in my center in Ho Chi Minh City. I love this city. Remember, can you remember the vocab to describe Ho Chi Minh City? Thriving metropolis city that never sleeps hustle and bustle fantastic i love it well done good okay guys one thing let's just focus a second now on the test preparation uh miss me am i okay for two or three more minutes is okay for you yep all right i'm coming to the end now thank you i'm really enjoying this so guys for test preparation Please remember for writing and speaking, it's essential that you find a teacher or somebody that you trust and that is qualified and that they can correct your mistakes, okay? It's so important, everyone, that we correct mistakes because if you're not aware of your mistakes, you will continue to do them, okay? So please make sure that you find someone. I find that recording your answers is really good, guys. Record, listen back, identify your own mistakes, really good. Okay. Remember, for listening, read the scripts, use the shadowing technique, please. Remember, reading at the same time as somebody is speaking, okay, at a slow speed to start with, okay. Then start doing a practice test around 40 to 45 minutes at the normal speed, speed number one, okay. Then we want to be checking our answer. Now, guys, the problem is that people do step one and two, and then they stop, okay, then they stop. Guys, you've got to make sure, please, that you follow back, you look back, and that you check your answers. This is so important. Um, my student last week, um, ladies and gentlemen, my student last week, she took the exam and she said uh, one month ago, and she only got around uh, 6.5 or 7, okay? And guys, I said to her, you need to go back and check, find the reasons why you failed in that listening, you know? And I promise you, uh, her name was Miss Hua, uh, the next week, she spent all day, every day, checking and finding the reasons for the right and the wrong answers. And the next week, she managed to get an eight in her uh, in her listening. So that was an amazing achievement from one of my students there. Okay, listen to it again over and over until you get the right speed. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, I love it. I love it. Really good. Okay, so for reading, guys, remember, translate the Cambridge books. Remember to effectively be able to do it in your head really quickly, please, and understand the grammar structures. I know this is difficult, guys, but remember, practice makes perfect, okay? Making sure that we do practice tests, guys, at, at the start for reading, don't worry about time. Don't worry about time. If it takes you one, two, three, four, five hours, do not worry. I want you to make sure you deeply understand the texts, okay? Great. 
Again, for reading, please make sure that you check your answers and you find the reasons why they are right. Why are they wrong? Yeah. And this is why it's good to find topics that you love, that you are passionate about. Okay. All right. Uh, reading the passages in the reading, understanding them clearly. Fantastic. Remember, guys, the main point for reading, please learn from your mistakes because this allows students to get higher scores. Yeah, fantastic. Then the final thing. Before the IELTS test, you must make sure that you practice the test under time pressure, okay? Ah, I know it's difficult, but when you're at home, especially for writing and reading, this is one month out from the test. You're one month away. You're feeling confident. You've got the foundation. You've got that strong academic foundation. You've implemented and you're using the strategies that I've shown you today. And now you need to practice under time pressure. I find time pressure to be one of the most difficult things for the test. So please make sure you do that. Remembering to plan for writing, plan for, for, for speaking and reading as well. So guys, with that, I would like to say what a pleasure it has been to speak to all of you today. Thank you so much. Um, and I would also love to wish you all a very, very merry, merry Christmas. Um, is everybody excited for Christmas, guys? Are you all excited for Christmas? Yeah, I, I cannot wait myself. Uh, Mia, are you excited for Christmas? Yes, I am. Definitely. It's the most uh, beautiful season that I love. <laughs> Really, yes, yeah. fantastic. And I love I love Christmas in, in Vietnam as well, because uh, many people put up Christmas decorations. Uh, it's just so beautiful, you know. The only problem me is that in, in, in Vietnam, in Ho Chi Minh City, there's no snow. You know snow? Yeah, yes. <laughs> so for me, I am a big fan of the snow as well. You know? Yeah. Oh, look at those lovely comments. Thank you, everybody. That's so beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much for Thank your... You. Thank you so much for such an energy and informative um, workshop today. Josh. My pleasure on a Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so we still have time for the um, Q and A section. Yeah, we okay. have. Uh, yeah, we have two question in Q and A box. Oh, how fantastic! Oh, have we got some questions? So the first question. I'm um, sorry, um, um, sorry, um, me, sorry to interrupt. Would you like me to unshare screen now or continue share screen? What What do you prefer? Uh, like it's up to you, yeah. 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 Hello, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. Great. Perfect. Wow. Okay, we've got some lovely questions here. Let me just have a little bit of water. So, guys, if you have any questions, please, uh, please do type them. I love questions. Thank you so much for all of your kind messages, everyone. Okay. Um, I see we have a great question here from uh, anonymous attendee. Okay, so this one here now, um, I'm not sure about the name, uh, maybe the name anonymous, a cool name, okay. Um, they've asked me guys, uh, what should I do when I have two months left until the exam? So two months left. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is you need to be honest with yourself, okay? You need, you need to ask yourself, what is my weakest skill? What skill do I find the most difficult? Because this is the one that you need to focus on, okay? So for me, guys, of course, it was writing, okay? And I was in denial. Do you know the word denial? When you refuse to listen to something. Um, so two months out, you need to identify your weakest skill and focus on that one. Remember, at this stage, we need to be implementing the strategies. You should already have a good, strong foundation. Remember, 50%, the IELTS with Charles 8 plus method, 50% that foundation. So now we want to be looking at the strategies, okay? Especially making sure that we know the different techniques for the different types of questions in the writing, okay? So if it's a um, advantage and disadvantage, uh, whatever type of question it is, uh, make sure that we know the different techniques for those and also for task one as well. And then one month later, so one month before the exam, please remember this is when you need to start practicing in time pressure and getting your essays marked from a diligent teacher. Brilliant. Wow, I love these. I hope that answered your question, uh, Anonymous. Thank you for your, your brilliant question. Yeah. Uh, me, can I have a look at the question from uh, Dan, Dan Wing? 
Then Nguyễn, yeah. So the the question is, um, he or she wants to get a good intonation like you. <laughs> so hand, uh, how can uh, they get them? Okay, so the best way to get good intonation is to have a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> no, remember that intonation is the rise and fall of our voice. Remember, up and down, up and down. Now, honestly, the best way to do this is to find, um, is to do the shadowing, okay? Now, one thing that I'm a big believer in is um, I try to do uh, TikToks. And when I do my TikTok videos, uh, I, I, and many of your videos as well on IDP are excellent, you will have the subtitles. You have the subtitles. And the beauty of it is while a student is, is reading and performing, they can also watch and listen to the subtitles. And we can listen over and over and over many times, copying the intonation or the, 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 the volume and the we call them reactions or reflexes from the speaker, okay? So guys, um, I would invite you all, Maybe you can search my name uh, and you can have a look at my TikTok and you can practice shadowing with that because I have the subtitles as well. Am I allowed to share that? You can see here. Yes, yes. If, yeah, I just want to make sure. So guys, I always have subtitle um, in English and Vietnamese on TikTok, you can follow me. And there I will try and speak slowly, um, very clearly for you so that you can have that intonation as well. So please try to shadow me. Uh, thank you, Thuy Ha, for your for, for coming today. Thank you. À, dạ và cũng chia sẻ với các bạn luôn là thầy cũng là à, à, thầy là thầy giáo dạy ở trung tâm IELTS with Charles ở thành phố Hồ Chí Minh nha các bạn. Yeah, brilliant. Oh, you can search yeah, me. Yeah, I just reach out. Yeah. On TikTok. I love TikTok at the moment. Uh, guys, do you all watch TikTok and YouTube? <laughs> I tried to create some. It's all English content, all about IELTS. Really interesting. Yeah, fantastic. Okay. Um, wow, I love all of these questions. Ah, brilliant. Yeah, so right now you can choose one or two questions. Yeah. yeah, I'm allowed to choose the questions I like. There's such good questions. I love it. Guys, if you have any more questions, please just let me know. It's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, great. Okay, um, we've got another question here uh, from another anonymous attendee. Thank you for your question. Um, Charles, I really want to focus on IELTS, but the school exams keep pressuring me. How can I balance both of them? Great question. Guys, one thing that uh, amazes me about Vietnam and the Vietnamese people is your work ethic. You know work ethic? Uh, I firmly believe that Vietnamese people are some of the hardest working people in the world. It always amazes me how hard students work. And not only that, you also have a lot of pressure. I understand that pressure. Now, one of the secrets is to try and not put too much pressure on yourself, okay? So, of course, schoolwork has to take priority, okay? I think that that's very, very important for your future, depending on your age. But IELTS is something I want you to do on the side, always in the background, and something that I kind of want you to enjoy. Um, I want you to enjoy the process. Don't put too much time pressure on yourself. Try to take things steady at your own speed, okay? So, so don't think of IELTS here, school here. Think of how they can complement each other. Because if you work on your English at school, it will make your IELTS score better and vice versa. So don't put too much pressure on yourself. Maybe allocate one or two days a week. Or maybe just go with your friends uh, to coffee club once a week or twice a week to keep practicing that speaking skill. Yeah. So please don't put too much pressure. Try to use uh, and enjoy both of yourself. Ah, uh, me, we've got a really good question from somebody called Huyn. Huyn. Um, yes, guys, Huyn, this, yeah. is, this is a little secret for you. Guys, do you want to know a little secret? I love secrets. Okay, now, when you're practicing, remember I told you earlier that you need to get your, your writing marked by an expert, some kind of teacher or some student that has a very high level so they can give you feedback. Now, guys, I would like to invite you all, please, to download a really, really good app um, for your computer. It's called Grammarly, Grammarly.com, okay? Please, all of you download this. It's free, or you can pay, or you can use the free one. 
And guys, you put your, your writing sample into Grammarly and it will check everything. It checks the grammar. It gives you new vocabulary, new collocations. Yeah, so this is a really good top tip for you guys. Um, do any of you use Grammarly? You, you use Grammarly? Uh, it's a really good app. It will correct your grammar. It will suggest new vocabulary for you as well. Fantastic. Mm. I love it. I love it. Wow. Any more questions? Any more questions about speaking? What's your advice for practicing speaking by yourself? Uh, thank you, uh, Team Minor. Oh, I think this is a great question. How to practice your speaking by yourself? Because some people feel a little bit silly um, practicing in front of the mirror. Me, how did you practice your speaking? You're speaking beautiful. How did you get so good? Thank you so much. Uh, actually, I am. Um... I always um, speak with um, my colleges, mm. and um, yeah. when I was um, in university, yes. um, my major is in English faculty. So really? yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, in my classroom, we have to speak English, almost English. So Fantastic. yeah. Yeah. So right. me is a perfect example. She speaks confidently, beautifully, because she came from an English speaking environment. She created the environments by studying at university and now working in an international workplace. Brilliantly. Yeah. That's why you feel so confident to do MC. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much.